first Hornby Class 390 Pendolino model was introduced back in 2006. At the time it was an impressive model, with a striking livery, DCC control, directional lighting and a wicked turn of speed. Fifteen years on, Hornby's latest Pendolino offerings are still based on that same model, with only the livery being revamped for the 2021 Avanti West Coast incarnations of the model. Is this really enough? It's time to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's review. So the first thing we're going to do is a brief unboxing of the four car set. We're then going to do a close up of the power and dummy cars and a close up of the coaches. We'll get into a quick running session and we'll follow that with a summary, scoring and final recommendation. Okay, let's get underway. Hi, so we're going to get into the unboxing of this set, which is the Avanti West Coast Class 390. Uh, Pendolino from Hornby. Uh, it's a four car set, uh, so part of their 2021 range. Uh, so I have the existing Pendolino and this apparently is based on the same tooling as that, uh, albeit with the, with the new livery. So we're going to take a quick look at this and uh, then we'll go through the normal uh, rest of the review process. So let's get this out of the box first. All right, so we've uh, magically got this out of the box. Uh, the packaging is in the kind of similar packaging to a lot of the high-speed trains from Hornby of late. Um, the Class 395s, for example, come in this sort of packaging, which I would describe as maybe eco-friendly packaging. Uh, I'll just make one note here that you see these tabs at the end here. Um, I'm quite happy to see those, uh, just to prevent, or provide that extra protection in the, in the event of a fall uh, for these. Now, they also have this very nice uh, kind of plastic sheath over each of the, the cars, which makes it very easy then to, to remove them from the packaging. So again, I, I do like that. And uh, uh, it does give a, a good bit of protection for both any detail. Now, there isn't a huge amount of added detail on these, but certainly you want to protect the livery. And I think that's in particular, uh, I do like to see that. Uh, we'll just take, there's an extra little protection piece on there. So we'll take that off. Um, so these are, let's say, based on the existing tool, but with this new, uh, the new Avanti livery. And I think it is a nice livery, uh, quite an attractive livery. And um, one of the, the features, I suppose, of this particular um, new um, 390 from Hornby is they are going to provide a range of incremental coaches. So you can build up a full train basically with this. So you can get things like the restaurant buffet coach and additional coaches. Um, first and second class or standard class uh, to build up a full a full train um, so we'll talk about that a little bit later on um, so here we've got the um, this is the main power car and it is um, I say physically very similar or it's identical physically I guess to the previous Pendolinos uh, now just looking at the actual drive mechanism uh, the drive is in here and we do have we've got traction tires on here as well so Anybody who is familiar with this channel will know I'm not a great lover of traction tires. And I guess when I do look at this, they basically haven't done any real upgrade here uh, to, to the drive aspect of this particular pack. And I think when you take the cost of the pack into account, I think that is a little bit of an issue. And again, I'll, again, I'll talk about that maybe a little bit later on. But the livery is nice. Uh, it's an attractive contemporary livery. And I think... Um, uh, certainly no complaints on that front and I, I have always I've been a good liker of the, the 390s from Hornby um, even if certain aspects of them have, have been a little bit basic but I think this is a nice livery and I do like the look of it and um, so I think n nothing wrong on that front so let's take a look at one of the the center coaches uh, significantly lighter uh, and we will do the normal weigh-ins as well here. We'll cover that off in the summary. Uh, so this one's got the pantographs on it. Uh, now, I think the, pan the standard of the pantographs here is, is, um, is certainly better than the Class 395. They're quite delicate, um, but uh, they, do, they do look the part. Uh, I guess there is a softness in the moulding there on, on the roof, and that's maybe an indicator of a, 
of an old mold um, uh, which which isn't isn't great um, but you know the level of detail there I think is, is perfectly adequate uh, and, and fine and um, just looking here that there's um, there's a wheels come off actually that's interesting so uh, we'll fit that back in it's in the box so it should fit in pretty handily uh, the pretty standard wheels so that's just interesting that that came off uh, in transit um, these do tilt of course and they've got a very very simple coupling mechanism and a very simple tilting mechanism but it is uh, simple but effective is the way i'd maybe describe it um, so again overall uh, a nice a nice livery for this particular coach and the kind of corridor gangway ends there again that's very similar to I suppose what we have for the Pendolinos today, uh, the Virgin uh, versions of those. So uh, this this looks pretty good. We'll do close-up views of these um, in the next section, and then we'll get into a running session. Uh, but I think probably no ma major surprises. Um, I think the major thing for me is maybe a, a slight disappointment that they haven't addressed, I suppose, uh, the motor here. This is a significantly more expensive pack uh, than the previous uh, packs, uh, Pendolino packs. So, you know, I think Hornby, I would have certainly liked if they had taken advantage of that to, uh, to improve, improve the, the, the motor and improve the driving and maybe get rid of the traction tires, but looks like they probably haven't done that. So we'll see the performance of this a little bit later on and we can compare it. And given that this is intended to run the full train, um, you would expect you know a level of performance in the motor to be able to do that but i'd certainly like it to be able to do that without traction tires and really there isn't sufficient weight in the in the park car to allow that and it doesn't have all-wheel drive again which is another inhibitor to it being able to do that okay um so i think if you're purchasing this you're purchasing it for the livery uh, you're not purchasing it for the enhancements any enhancements on the motor side uh, or maybe it's your first pendolino in which case well and good, that's, that's great and I'm still a fan of the Pendolino so we're going to take a closer look now, then get into the running session and then we'll get into our summary and scoring. Okay, let's, let's move to the next section of the review. Okay, now we're going to get into a close-up view. Uh, we'll take the usual side on of the power car and we can see the, the new livery here. Uh, which is a nice livery. I think it's reasonably well rendered. There's a little bit of softness on the edges and a little bit of overpainting in a couple of areas. But overall, I think that the livery is fine. It's acceptable and it is a nice livery, as I say. And uh, we'll, we'll see a 360 view in a few minutes. The detail is identical to the previous sets. And I guess uh, both the underbody detail, the roof detail, this is the same mold uh, for all of them. Uh, it's, it's also the same electrics uh, running the car anything that's new here is the new printed detail as part of delivery so here we're taking a 360 view of the power car and the dummy car and uh, these don't have pantographs the pantographs are actually on, on the coaches so we'll see that in a minute again these are again identical to the previous pantolinos you've got the the windscreen wiper in the front there you've got the lighting put the direction lighting in a headlight uh, which is which is a nice bright headlight and again, you can see the, the rendition of the livery there and you can see a view of the roof detail. Now, the, the fact that this is a 15 year old mold doesn't show so much on these cars, but does show up a quite a bit more when you look at the coaches. And there is a softness to the mold that does give away that it is an older mold. I think overall, these are these are fine. They're, again, they're acceptable, I think, uh, for a particular price range, um, which I think this particular set is selling beyond, unfortunately. But again, you get a good look at, at, at the livery there and, and it is quite an attractive livery. So here we have the two middle coaches, one of which has the pantograph. And I guess the pantograph itself is a disappointment. Um, it's quite loose. It doesn't have this, the stiffness that you have on, on the, the previous pendolinos and it isn't uh, very strong. We're also going to take a look at the, the molding around the pantograph, pantograph area as well. And I think this is where the kind of difference shows up. If you look at the top there, uh, which is the Avanti Pendolino, you can see the softness on the molding there relative to the, the molding underneath, uh, which is essentially a model from, from 10, years, 10 years ago. And again, that's just down to the reuse of the tooling. 
and and that's that's what really shows up it, it's just particularly bad in that area it's not as noticeable across the rest of the roof detail or, or kind of the end body detail or even the underbody detail uh, but that, that particular piece around the pantograph is particularly bad so again you see the coaches here again a nice rendition overall and uh, you know quite quite uh, presentable so we're going to get into the running session I do have a Ligaman Biffo uh, DCC sound installed in the park car and also DCC controller in the uh, the rear car as well for the lights. It's a pretty smooth running session. Now I did have a particular issue with the model that I purchased and it, it had the wrong wheels basically and I've been on to Hornby about that and I will note that as a quality issue. Uh, it's not representative, I don't think most people have this problem. Uh, I, I'm running in the power car now with wheels that I've borrowed from my previous Alstom Pendolino because literally I was getting severe derailment problems with the, the, the ones that came with the model out of the box. So I, th I think it's, it's a batch issue, uh, more of a one-off issue, so I'm, I'm going to treat it that way and I'll, I'll probably do a quick short video to give some guidance to people who might see the same symptoms of having the wrong wheels and what they how they might ma manifest itself i like to run the running sessions up to prototypical speed and obviously that becomes an issue uh, certainly and also running on, on the radius 2 is also a problem with the older wheels this is pretty smooth and overall it's not a bad running session it's to the same standard as the previous pendolino that i have it does run well and is pretty responsive under DCC, unlike other models like the Class 395s, for example. I've always found those not that responsive under DCC. Um, you know, you issue a command and, and the command may take a couple of seconds to actually uh, uh, be implemented. Uh, it does have a slightly different configuration of the traction tires. The two traction tires are on the one bogey. So that is different from the actual production set of the Avanti Pedalito, where they're actually on different bogies. And I think having them on different bogies creates a slight extra wobble. And you do see this you do see this wobble a little bit. And you'll see particularly when you have a lot of carriages. And we will do, I'm, I'm going to show a view at the end here, uh, running uh, with an eight car configuration. Uh, I've actually brought in some of my Virgin coaches to, to bring it up to eight cars. I don't have, I can't get the full nine cars. I don't have a coach to do that. Uh, but you do see this the sort of wobble effect of the locomotive uh, while the traction tires are trying to get a grip and you see that more i think on on this particular model than you would see on the previous one but you do see it on both and it's the characteristic of the traction tires kind of taking this grip and you get the, the model kind of wobbling a bit so here now we're running with the eight car configuration and we're starting from a standing start a little bit of a delay there so you can see that there's more of a lag in terms of the pickup of speed due to the eight cars However, I didn't find this a bad uh, running session with the eight cars and it does get up to a prototypical good speed. I didn't want to run it uh, excessively fast because I do have the bad wheels on three of the, the cars in this set. And those coaches will derail if I actually run too fast, uh, unfortunately, until the, the wheels get changed on them. But overall, I found this eight car running session pretty okay. I know some people have, have had probably issues, seen some issues with it. I, I think it's pretty responsive, a little bit of slowness and pickup there, um, but overall, you know, uh, not, not really a problem and um, I'm probably pretty pleased with it and as I say, it does get up to a reasonable uh, speed. So let's get into the summary. Uh, so we're looking at the four car set, uh, which is the R3952 um, uh, in the Avanti West Coast livery. It comes with a five pole skew on motor. And it does have all wheel pickup on the power car, but it only has four drive wheels and two of those have traction tires. And as I said, they're on alternate axles. Previous Pendolinos had them on the same axle. It's got a eight pin DCC ready in both the power and dummy cars. It's got the directional lighting from the original model. And it, it specifies a minimum radius two curve. And, and it does actually run fine on radius two curves. I had the problem because the wheel issues on radius two cars, but that was very specific to the, the problems I had with, with uh, the incorrect wheels. Uh, so in general, it will run fine. However, I, I wouldn't really recommend running it up to full prototypical top speeds on a radius two curve, to be honest. I think um, that's probably pushing it. Uh, the top speed I had in the running session here was 125 miles an hour, and I was drawing a peak current of 210 milliamps at that for the four car set, which is a pretty low current draw, to be honest. Of another review which goes through the class 800 which is a much significantly larger current draw albeit a much better motor 
so I, I was limited in this because again of those wheel issues and I wasn't I would have liked to have pushed it up to the 140 miles per hour level but that wasn't possible without derailment with the, the wheels that I had. Um, the power car weighs 318 grams which is light so you can see the root of some of the pulling power problems there and the reason why there's tra traction tires on the model so 318 is, is light. Uh, and I think it's particularly like that when you want to look at an eight or, nine, eight or nine car train. Dummy car is 245 grams, which is actually heavier than the dummy car of a, a HST, for example, a class 43 HST. Interestingly enough, it is slightly heavier. The coaches as well are heavier than your typical Mark III coach, for example. And I think the reason for that is there is additional weights added at the bottom of the bogies to lower the center of gravity on these coaches to provide greater stability. So that's effectively, I think, what's adding the extra weight there over a typical Mark III coach, for example. And so if we look at the uh, retail selling price, uh, this varies between about £240 up to the recommended retail price of uh, 274.99 which is what you'll pay if you order this directly from Hornby. Uh, the added coaches come in at between 44.54 and 49.49 which is again the re recommended retail price and I think in both cases these are overpriced and we'll look at that when we look at the scoring. So let's go on and take a look at the scoring. So the running performance for this is, is I'm giving it a 7. It, it does suffer from the fact that you don't have the all-wheel drive, obviously. It can stall, so even though there's a five-pound motor in there, I have found occasions under low speed where it just stalls, and the only way of getting it going again is to actually push the, the power car. It's a long time since I've had to do that. It kind of has a sweet spot, I would say, when it gets up to maybe a prototypical 100 miles per hour, that kind of range. It kind of likes that speed, and it also seems to pull the, the eight or nine car rake better at that speed. Uh, so... It's a, it's a motor that likes to be run faster. But you do have traction tires on there as well. They didn't cause so much uh, problems with the track in terms of uh, you know adding uh, deposits on the track, but they did show with deposits on the wheels of both the power car itself, particularly the drive wheels, the other, the other two drive wheels that don't have uh, traction tires. I saw them getting very dirty. And you'll also see dirt on the coach wheels as well. Uh, you just get a buildup of deposits uh, because of those traction tires. So I'm not, not fans of them. And I may look at taking them out and replacing them and, and see how she goes. That's really for another day. So I think seven overall is reasonable. As I say, when you get to higher speeds, it's not a bad performer and it is pretty well responsive under DCC. And I think you'll see from the running session and if you look at the, the full running session, which is a separate video, it, it is not bad. It's a seven and that's what it is. And your expectations have to be set appropriately. Appearance and detail is only a seven. And this comes down to, I think, really the livery... It's not as crisp and sharp as you'd expect from a full price model, for example. This is railroad quality is how I'd make describe it. And the softness in the tooling, the fact that you are re reusing this older tooling and the, and the detail is limited and the pantograph is poor, quite a brittle pantograph and I'm, I'm not, not really happy with it. So the overall appearance and detail, I think seven is, is a, an okay score. Again, if this was a lower cost set, I wouldn't, wouldn't have so, so much of an issue with this being a seven. Uh, but because of its price point, I think the expectation level is a bit higher. Extras and variants. You've got in two variants of this now. Obviously, you have the older variants and the Virgin liveries. Uh, and now you've got uh, the kind of Pride uh, type livery. And you've got the, the, the livery we're looking at here. Both of them West Coast uh, liveries. So six there. There really isn't a lot of other extras on this. You've got the lighting, obviously, the directional lighting, uh, which has been there from day one on this model. And again, as I say, the pantograph really isn't uh, isn't great. Is and I think one point to note, and I didn't mention early on, is actually all of the cars don't have any seating. So the coaches have no seating, uh, the power and dummy cars have no seating. If you put lights into this thing, there'll be no seating. The coach lighting really isn't an option. Build quality and packaging, uh, 6 out of 10. And uh, no, I am dropping a little bit here because I, I'm not pleased with the fact that I got a set with the wrong wheels. Now, every wheel in the whole set is, is incorrect from, what, from looking at my own measurements. What would concern me perhaps is that someone may get a set that has only a couple of wheels that are incorrect. And what I've seen from the running is that once you've got these incorrect wheels, you're going to get derailment at higher speeds. It'll be less of an issue if you're running on radius four curves or if you have greater curves than that. If you've got a radius three environment, which I, I have, or if you're trying to run on radius two, it's going to be problematic if you have any of those uh, incorrect wheels. It's bad that that happened, and so I'm not, not pleased about it. 
I think other quality aspects again I think I, I would put the pantograph down as, 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 as kind of poor quality I think the packaging is is basic it's the packaging of again a railroad type set a, a budget set and again the pricing here is pushing this into a different domain could be better uh, as I said and I think a six is probably where this sits right now similarly for the price value this is I would say 25 30 percent overpriced from what it should be and for what it is and hence again a six out of ten for that so the, the weighted score is is not fantastic at a 6.5 it's it's not terrible either but this should be scoring higher in some of these items and it's a bit disappointing at scoring as low as this so we get into the kind of the final recommendation so i really think this is a set that has caused some problems for hornby i think they're falling between two stools as i say here they're trying to, on the one hand, service the you know the modeler who's looking for the latest models, getting the latest livery of the Pendolino, versus having an entry level set like the Eurostar set, for example, which is a classic entry level set. That set is very good value. Pick it up for hundred hundred pounds for a four car set, and you know fifty pounds, sixty pounds for an extra two cars. Um, so that that is a good value set. This is not, and the quality of this isn't much better. Uh, the pantographs, for example, are way better on the uh, on the Eurostar. Uh, it doesn't have lighting, so that's that's one of the distinguishing differences. But it does have DCC control. It does have the uh, traction tires, and I've you know I've got a few videos that cover actually replacing those and taking them off the the Eurostar. And it definitely ran better uh, with the traction tires taken off, albeit taking a hit in terms of the top speed. And I think the same would apply here. And I say I think I will look at that. But I think Hornby have tried to position, I suppose, what I think is in 2021, this is really a railroad type set. That's his level of capability. And they're trying to position it as more of a full price set. And hence it's too expensive. And I think that's putting people off. I think if you're a fan of the livery, if you're a fan of the Pendolino, this is the only show in town. That's the reason I bought it. Uh, I, I did want to get the more current livery. I knew from day one that it, it didn't involve any new improvements on the performance side and I was prepared to live with that. But I do think it's it's a pricey set. If you compare it to something like the Class 800, which obviously is, is, is quite a bit more expensive again, but you get an awful lot more with the Class 800 and it's a much more satisfying running experience. So certainly for an, an experienced modern image modeler, something like the 800, the, one of the new Azumas, uh, is likely to be a much better experience to have on your layout overall. You're going to get better quality in terms of the overall finish and appearance, and you're going to get infinitely better quality in terms of the running performance. And I'll cover that in my Class 800 review, which would be out in the next few days. You're kind of caught here. A lot of people like the Pendolino. They wanted to get a Pendolino model, and hence they've gone for this. And I was one of those. However, the shortcomings of the model in 2021 really do show. Maybe, you know, Horn, we need to take a look at this. Do they want to revamp this model and turn it into something that a more serious modeler would be happy with? Or do they want to just have a bargain basement offering, uh, entry level offering? And they've kind of fallen between the two right now. Because so, it's too expensive. It's, this is not an entry level price. So I'll put it down as a fans only. People who are fans of the Pendolino, fans of the livery, want to have a, a, a current uh, version of this in, in a current livery. Go for it. You can see how it performs, but go with your eyes wide open in terms of what you're purchasing. And I think the investment, if you're going to invest in a full nine car rake for this, that's not cheap. If you're going to add sound, that's not cheap. And I think it's a pity to be building all of that on top of fundamentally what is a you know a 15 year old motor design, which was even in its day was a bit rough and ready. And today it's not what somebody would want to have, you know, and particularly if you're used to something like the class 43 HSTs, for example, and you know how good they are from a running perspective or the class 800, this falls way short of those. So that's my assessment. As I say, for some people, you just may have no other choice and you're going to go with this. If you're looking for an entry level set, go with the Eurostar, much better set. If you're buying it for a younger person for Christmas, perhaps whatever, that's a much better value set. You get great fun out of it. Uh, and the pantographs are very robust. This is just too expensive for that. And I think people may look elsewhere. So it's a pity. It's a missed opportunity, I think, from Hornby. Uh, it's nice to get the new liveries. Absolutely. Uh, no, de no debate there. But I think there is a need for a little bit of investment on the Pendolino. It's a popular train. It's a shame that it's not getting the full treatment here that it probably deserves. Okay, so that's my review. I'm sorry that it isn't a little bit more positive. 
but it is what it is and for some people that might be absolutely sufficient and they're prepared to live with it and you can see from the running session it's it's adequate to a point I had particular problems because of the wheels which I didn't want that to tarnish my view here in terms of the review the problems I had were pretty horrendous and I'll, I'll capture those in a separate video but the fact that that even occurred that I was able to get the wrong wheels was bad this model as I say is a little bit of a disappointment it really needed to be an improvement it isn't it's just a new livery and that's all it is Okay, thanks for joining today's review. We'll hopefully see you on the next one. Hit a like, give your comments. If you have this model, please give me your feedback. I would like to hear how people have been getting on with it and uh, what your thoughts in terms of what Hornby should do for the Pendolino specifically. And we'll see where things go in the future. Okay, thanks for joining today. We'll see you on the next one. And in the meantime, happy modeling. Mm -hmm.